playing back uh, John Dobbins uh, after there? Yes, let's hear it. Ready? He said something earlier. All right, so I right, say I'm um, John. I'm going to go in your helicopter tomorrow. Right, I'm going to have your car tomorrow, Pat. Tell them who you are. I'm Don. Tell them on. Put that on. Please. Can you say? You I'm going to have your car. Put that on. Please. 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 Okay. Please. Yes. Please. Yes. Sorry, gentlemen. What do we got to, uh... Right, what am I doing here? Beach. You know we're going by helicopter to the airport tomorrow morning? Do you want to do that? All right. Okay. Can, all right, ready? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm speaking to you from the White House, where Eleanor Roosevelt served as First Lady longer than any other woman has or ever will. It is particularly appropriate that you gather at this time to pay tribute to her, for this is the week that has been set aside to honor the United Nations. Eleanor Roosevelt always considered the United Nations our best vehicle for world peace, world understanding, and the advancement of human rights. After she died last year, Governor Stevenson spoke for all of us when he said that she would rather light candles than curse the darkness, and her glow has warmed the world. To keep those candles burning brightly, the Congress has chartered the Eleanor Roosevelt Memorial Foundation. It has made an impressive start. Its decision to concentrate, at least initially, in the area of human rights is a wise one. For this was a preoccupation of Eleanor Roosevelt, and its complex problems need the kind of attention. Wait a minute, John, wait a sec. Don't say anything, because I've got to give this speech. Can you sit down over there now and be a good boy? John. Come on now, be a good boy. John. All right, Andy, you better take him out. Come on, John. Goodbye, John. We'll see you later.